there. The mics are hot right now. It says five. All right, please stand for the pledge. Face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I will check. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to open the special meeting and work session of the village board scheduled for monday march 11 2024 may i have a second second all in favor aye. aye all right so at the top of the meeting um we are going to have a presentation from mr Joel friedman. mr friedman um regarding new york class new york class was something that he had come and discussed with the front office here um we are very much in support of it but I just felt like it might be a good idea to give the village board a little bit of a better, more, more granular level understanding of it. So the floor is yours. Absolutely. So um, you all see me? If you want to stand up? Yep, go so ahead. It's a, um, it's a cooperative investment program. So all the towns, the villages, the school districts, counties, cities, towns, so municipalities, and fire districts can actually pull their money together. Uh, in New York class. It started in 1989, so it's been around for a long time. Assets have gone up quite a bit. It's up to uh, $12 billion in assets now around the state of New York. So we have some counties um, who have, you know, over $100 million in the program. And we have some small fire districts or departments, uh, some small villages that might only have 30 or 40 or $50,000. We don't care. It doesn't matter the amount you put in. There are no minimums whatsoever. Um, You're good. So, so basically, how it works. Um, my background: I worked for Standard and Poor's in New York City for 25 years. I used to rate New York class. I used to rate pools programs just like this. Um, and it's the goals are safety, liquidity, yield. We know municipality safety, can't, liquidity, and, and yield. Then yield. So safety is number one. So you can't lose any money. You, you, you know, the the key for you is you don't want to be in a position where you you can lose money, right? So everything in the program is collateralized or it's treasury bills. That's it. So we can only buy the same thing that the village can buy, which is treasuries or basically bank deposits. All of our banks that we use are also collateralized, just like you would have to do over that $250,000 loan. Um, so that's part of the safety aspects. Everything's collateralized. You will get a collateral report every month. Um, just like your bank would provide. You keep your bank, so whatever banks you're using, you keep them. You just move the money right online between your bank and your class. Think of it like a savings account, online savings account, and then hopefully you'll earn some additional yield, and then you move it back whenever you need it. It's <coughs> daily liquidity, 100%. So that means if you need, you put a million dollars in, you want that million dollars back next week or in a few days, you get to move it back. You keep your interest. So if compounds and pays every day so you keep all the interest um and it's never lost even a penny for participants since 1989 uh the yield will vary so whatever the short-term rates are at the time the fed will move right you saw the fed moving up right now the federal reserve range of those short-term rates are like five and a quarter or so um our yield on this program is 5.23 percent right now um, the rates in New York class over the last, let's say, three or four months have been about low 520s up to about 530. So it's in that small range. Um, we negotiate with the banks that we use. So we get very attractive rates of um, right now over five and a quarter from those banks. So nothing in, the, the, nothing in the stock market. Everything no, you do is tied to no. CDs and money markets and those kind of it, types it's of all things. all tied to short term. It's only treasuries and collateralized bank deposits <clears throat> and overnight um, bank type product. That's right. So it's and not, so, but it's not FDIC, I'm sure. So some of it's FDIC, the Up rest is treasuries or collateralized. So, so that's your protection is that okay. collateral. It's like an insurance protection. We've never used a collateral since 1989. It's there for your oh, protection. God. It's never had it been used, including during the 2008 financial crisis. I used to rate this. Standard & Poor's still rates at AAAM. Um, and what that means is they get the portfolio every week. They look at the portfolio. It's within the controller's guidelines as well. What's your yield for, on like 2020, 21, 22, 23? Very low. 
during uh okay. during the <laughs> <weekend. laughs> no, five, five is great now because we're riding the wave but it's correct so the yield the is going to vary with whatever the fed does whatever the short term so you're probably in the two points back in 2020 2020 when the fed lowered rates to zero yeah so we are at like 10 basis points or something whereas the bank was paying maybe five basis points you know, right. 0.05. Yeah, right. Right. So it's be, it's better than just putting the money in the bank and saying, pay us whatever interest rate. So you, you're us. likely over time will get more. And so if you look at what your banks are paying now, which I don't know the answer to that, I did come in, I met, we were definitely one or two percent higher at the time. We yeah. don't know right now. Yeah. But so, for example, some of the local, um, oh, so there's a board that oversees as well. And there's two local board members um, in Orange County anyway. And um, who are they? So Bob Wheeling is at the Howells Fire District. Yeah, I see him. Okay. Okay. And um, and Port Jervis City School District, Debbie Rutt. Is Got the treasurer. So those are two uh, within kind of this area. There's some in Westchester. So, so, so the benefit to us, uh, uh, we don't want to just put it into a bank cat and, and not get the maximum return we can, on, we can on it without the risk. But we're not tying it up in a money market or a CD, which requires seven months, 12 months, yeah. 14 months. As you said, it is completely liquid. So if we need something big happen here, we need to pull money out. Yeah. There's no penalty for that. No penalty. We'll, we'll never charge you a transaction fee. You're not going to get a bill from us. So how do you guys make money? So it's a basis point. So well, we're they've paying. got to loan the money out somehow, right? We don't loan, no. Yeah. We, we so then how do you? It's, it's a very simple thing. So it's very much like a money market mutual fund. So if you've seen like Fidelity Investments or Vanguard, they have these money market funds. They'll just like us, we charge up to, it's about an average of about 13 basis points, 0.13. Yeah. So if we're paying 523 today, which is what we are, that means everybody, every fire district, every town, every village gets 523. Doesn't matter your size. When you add the 0.13% on top of that, I have to do the math, 530, what? Six. 536 is what the fund is yielding right now. 536, it's yielding. So we're not writing you a check, but you are taking. Correct. So that's what we're taking. That's the so net. So the number you're giving us is the net. Correct. So I'm giving you the net, and that's what you're actually getting, the 523. Yeah. Um, so it's a very small thing. You're speaking Mandarin to me right so. now. It's like, <laughs> thank God you guys understand yeah. this. But so, so you're not, so when you say, so you're not loaning that money out. How is that money accruing? Accru we're just buying treasuries. Or, buying or, treasuries. Right, and, buying and that's treasuries. what it's rooted and, in. And short debt. term. And CEOs. debt. Is, okay. is, it, is it, so you had written and, and gave a, a, an X, thank you, by the way, and I'm sorry for being late, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you had provided a lot of these points uh, in writing to us a while yes. back when I had raised some of the questions. And you said, you know, no, no investor in this program lost money during that's the correct. 2008, nine crash, right. which was great. Uh, so I take it that CDOs weren't a big component or the oh things gosh, that caused no. the... So <laughs> you're talking about collateralized debt obligations? Yeah. No, none Money of that kind of stuff weird can be buy. Like There's no yeah. structured notes. These are very vanilla type securities, right? So I used to rate that and I used to unfind right. you and I've it seen those. So it wasn't good. And I was but, surprised to see you were coming tonight because actually I was I was the one who had raised all the questions and yeah. I was fine with your explanation. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. I don't think I actually. Right. I think it was more say. just for the rest of us <laughs> yeah, that yeah. we could understand it. Yeah. So no, um, I don't mind coming. At no, all. No, so so here, let me cut yeah. to the chase. This. So from our perspective, so we're sitting on about two point four, two point five million dollars worth of unallocated fund balance. Mm -hmm. So that's the money that we would be seeking to. Mm -hmm. We're not going to put our as we bring revenues in. Right, and then write checks out for our expenditures. Right, we're, we're not we're not investing that money with you. What we're doing is the money that we're sitting on that's drawing a lower so interest can, rate in the bank. Well, we're not doing the whole amount. No, right. no, we you would look do, to do a number. You can do whatever amount yeah. you want. Again, we don't have any minimums. Water. You don't have any minimums. <laughs> no minimums. We have unlimited sub accounts too, which means that you can set it up so every one of those the accounting is done for you. So if you have a water, sewer, ARPA fund, whatever. Each one of those gets a report at the end of the month. Um, again, there's no transaction. Can you give us some examples of local communities? And I can. Okay. I actually have a list, All right. which I have a few I'll give you Off guys. the top of your head, like, like yeah, what so kind of amounts are people investing? Let's, oh. It's something similar to us. So, well, the town of Cornwall uses it, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and so does the school district. All right. What is it, What does the town of Cornwall have invested? Oh, I can't say that. You can't say no, that? No, because that's, I mean... I, it is public if you want to. It online. is public, right? It, gotcha. All right. But what so I can they tell have, you, here, uh, this will help you. 
So we have 202 villages we use our program around the state. Around They have an average of $3 million. An average? Each yeah. village has an average of $3 million? Well, I mean, an average, right? So and says the some, village. Yeah. Yeah. So some will have yeah. 20 million yeah. and other villages have yeah. small amounts of one or two million, right? So when you start using it, then, then you see that people start using it more because you notice that you're earning a lot more for it. So you can use other types of reserve accounts, other things like that. Got it. Because you can move it same day with a wire. You get your money by, if you do it before noon, or yep. fund close at noon, you'll get your money same day in your account. ACH, which is automatic clearinghouse, is next day. Got it. Can I, Go ahead, Bill. Yeah. Go ahead. Can I, I ask I, you I, to do yeah. something odd, which is to completely <clears throat> switch your perspective and come in and tell us why we wouldn't want to do it? So that's a great question. And the reason I took this job is because there's not a lot of reasons why you wouldn't. Um, ah, well played. No, I'm well totally yes, yes. yes. I used to be part of the banking group, okay, at s &P. And the banks, I know how they earn their money, right? So, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're for profit. But they're going to make some additional money by, you know, giving you, let's say they're giving you 3%, when right now short-term rates are over 5%. That's over 200 basis points, over 2% <coughs> that they're keeping for their ongoing operations. Our operations are very low, low budget overall. Um, you know, one of the reasons we find that some don't do it is they just don't want to take that next step, bringing it to the board, because it takes time to do that. Reading the documents, it takes time to do that. And then, you know, once you, you have to get set up online, which is an online portal, that doesn't take long. But some villages, especially small ones, just don't feel like it's worth it to them, even though they can earn a lot more money. So that's really what it comes down to. Here's a list, which I'll give you guys. I got a question for you, too. Who who oversees? Does the comptroller's yes. office oversees? So is there, like, um, uh, school districts, some towns, towns and villages are have a maximum amount of fund balance they're allowed to carry by state regs. So state regs do not have a maximum for this. Okay. Um, because everything, it's, it's a... It, even for school itself, districts? Even for school districts. Wow. Now a school district, per, each school district has their own rules. One school district actually has over $100 million in New York class. Others will have a rule that you can't do more than 25% per bank or, but, you know, financial yeah. institution. So that's up to them, though. The Comptroller's Office does not have that guideline. Because <coughs> SED regulates the amount of fund balance you're allowed to have. Mm. We do. SED, State Education Department. Okay. <coughs> okay. I got a question for you. Sure. If I needed to see a face, <laughs> talk to somebody, where would that be? Where would the closest place or how quickly could somebody come here if we That's had questions? Me. Okay. So you're and based I'm, out of where? Well, I'm based out of uh, East Fishville, Hopewell Junction. Okay, oh, other side of the river. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Somewhere. So um, if we needed to see you, your your phone Thursday. call and a 30 minute drive away. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Um, any other questions from trustees? I mean, I, I don't think we had any problems with it. I think okay. the board bill was asked. Bill's in the financial business, so he had more pointed questions than the rest of us. But for the rest of us, it was just getting that warm and fuzzy and kind of seeing you in person. Um, I'm going to discuss this with the board. Um, you don't have to stick around for that. Okay. Um, and then I think what we'll do is uh, Doris and I will reach out to you. Great. Is that okay? Um, yes. And I'm going to leave this packet with you. Great. And in here is a registration packet if you decide to do it. And you just, it's, it takes about 15 minutes to fill out. Do you have to pass a resolution? There's a resolution in there. That's we're easy. Already, I think we already did. We already yeah, I think we, I think we did. We authorized okay. you to yeah. get the contract. Yeah, there you go. Yep, uh, yep. I think yeah. we're we're right. we're beyond that. And so, if we wanted to, let's just yeah. say for you know s's and giggles, as they say, mm -hmm. find out what the town of Cornwall had invested in that. That's publicly available yes, it information, is. is it not? It is. You can go online. You can see that. Okay. Um, Good. Or you can just ask them. I'm sure they're going to tell you. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. The school, the school too. How long, have, how long yeah. has the town of Cornwall been? Cornwall, not that long. Probably a year or so. How about the school district? Long. Um, five years, maybe. Interesting. So you deal with Mr. Sotland, Harvey Sotland. Yes. Excellent. So I'll give him a shot. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Appreciate you coming in, Mr. Freeman. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Right. That was beyond helpful. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Take care. You're going to go out that the front oh, right there. Is there a restroom? Yep, yes, there is. Street. Right right around the corner right here. Go ahead. We're not going to say anything bad about you while you're here. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, we did, Bill, thank you for reminding me of that. We did pass a resolution for me to execute that. Does anybody 
Maybe I should wait till these, but anybody have any issues or problems with it? Here's what I'm thinking. Um, as we sit on just under $2.6 million in unallocated fund balance, what about a million dollars to start and see how it goes? They've been in business since 1989, have not lost money. Anything that they're doing is better than us just keeping it in the bank. I feel like we're not doing our due diligence if we don't at least do something that yields better than that without taking on huge risk. What are your thoughts? It's marginally riskier than FDIC insured deposits in a bank. Um, what did he mean by part of it is FDIC he said, insured? Um, well, I wasn't sure if the treasury component was FDIC insured or not, uh, the bonds, but those are those are pretty safe because that's government bonds that, you know, most of it, most of it is FDIC, FDIC insured. insured bank deposit account. But when he says most of and it, US is it a, is it a well, percentage? A chart. Right, but is it a percentage? And it just, like, 60, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, 62.26%. So of what we put in, of what every entity, and every municipality that puts money in, it's 62% that that's, they that's, said. That's, that's treasury. Yeah. Uh, and then the collateralized debt bank, collateralized bank deposits, 14.08%. Got it. So that, to me, suggests that the, the, the larger component of it is you know, as risk-free as a U.S. Treasury bond. Right. And the other piece is where it's maybe possibly, but according to the track record that we've heard and the fact that they're not investing in the kind of risky things that were some of the basis for the crash in 2008 and 2009, suggests to me that it sounds safe. I was thinking one-third of what we had. So I was thinking, thinking a third the third ballpark well. of... One-third, one-third? Where'd yeah. you come up with one-third? Just because it's like, to me, it's Spread just the putting it, it's just the risk. All right. And if, you know, we see it goes well over a couple of years and you can add more. But I, I guess you'll see one it. One third, two thirds. Right, Bill? I, I mean, monthly, it. actually. I, I yeah. don't disagree. I don't disagree. So that would be under a million dollars. We're probably talking 700,000, 750. We have 2.6. It's 18. Yeah. So, okay. All right. I will. I will discuss with Doris tomorrow. Is the board comfortable with 750 to start? I am. Yes. Doris? Okay. Dave? Yep. All right. Then that's what we'll do. And we'll follow it for a year. 2.4 we have. Yeah. I was going to say because we did use some of the fund balance this year to keep ourselves underneath the tax cap. So, okay. All right. I think that was helpful. By the way, these are all the close ones. So it's a lot. Yep. The nearby. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, next matter of business. Um, Jim, do I need to open the special meeting or did I open it already? We How already did. did. We opened the special meeting. meeting and business. Do we just keep the special meeting open for all the board business afterwards? No, we can close it out. All right. Right after the, the appointments after the, yes. and the purchase of the asphalt trailer. Okay. Yeah. So the first item of business and gentlemen and gentle lady, um, I've been speaking to you folks one-on-one -on -one and um, in uh, executive session regarding personnel matters about movements and what we're going to do and, and what we're looking at going forward. The village right now feels like it is not in a position to hire an outside treasurer. We have looked at, when I say reams and tranches of um, resumes and CVs that have been sent here, um, I know it's in the middle of tax season, which is a bad time to be seeking a treasurer. And I know the village's track record in trying to seek outside help from a treasurer over the course of the last 15 years has been uh, has 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 been um, has been a tough thing. Um, Gene Mahoney did it for almost a decade um, for us uh, with a stipend. Obviously, with Gene gone now, Paul is filling some of that role, and Megan Gishwind, who is our deputy village clerk, and has done a great job with that, um, and is looking for more. Uh, responsibilities. Um, the village board has discussed this at length in our meetings, and the thought is is that we separate the duties, we move them, we cross pollinate a little bit. So the duties, the deputy village treasurer has always been a part time, I'm sorry, full time position, and the treasurer, even though we have it, it could be a full time <coughs> position. We've only had a part time. Um, treasure here, which makes it kind of difficult and awkward because you're bringing somebody in that hasn't been here for a long time to oversee a deputy village treasurer who's been here a long time and has obviously the knowledge, skills, and experiences um, that a treasurer would need to have. But to do that, you got to pay somebody to do that. Um, so what the village board is seeking to do is to assign some duties to the deputy village treasurer, Paula Howard, and then to increase some of the, the duties of the deputy village clerk, Megan Gishwin, 
and to do this on a trial basis for one year um, to see if this works. If this works, I'm confident that I believe it can work, having met with them and with the village clerk to make sure the delineation of duties, there's no blind spots, there's no things that fall through the cracks. Everybody has responsibilities, knows what they are, and they're all assumed. So um, to do this, we're going to take the approximately $9,000 that was the stipend for the village treasurer. So Jean got that on top of what she got as the village clerk um, to be the village treasurer. We're going to take that stipend and split it between the two. And the duties are, are commensurate with, with that split as I see them having ground through them with Paula, Megan, and Doris last week. So I'm going to make a motion to increase the salary of Deputy Village Treasurer Paula Howard by $4,500 or half, approximately half of the stipend that Gene was making. The increase is effective retroactive to March 1st of 2021, so 10 days ago. Four. 24. I'm sorry, 2024, right. through the period ending April 7th of 2025. I believe April 7th is a reorganization yes. meeting in 2025. The increase is merited upon the additional administrative duties that the deputy treasurer will be performing during the intermittent absence of a village treasurer. May I have a second? Second. Any further discussion or questions, issues? That's a good plan. Yeah. It will save the village, as I did the math, um, almost $20,000 for this year. If it works, we will continue it and then we'll make some formal appointments. And if it doesn't work, we can always readjust back to the way it was and repost for the treasurer position. And the, the it's, uh, it's a, there's no, we're not appointing a treasurer, correct? We've, we've resolved that question. We're adding additional we responsibilities, yeah. Bill, Understood. during the intermittent absence yes. of a gotcha. village treasurer. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, Jim, will you make sure you make note of that so we yeah. can give that to, uh, to to Doris? All right. I'm also going to make a motion to increase the salary of Deputy Village Clerk Megan Gishwin by an additional $4,500 per annum. The increase is effective retroactive to March 1st, 2024 through the period ending April 7th, 2025. The increase is merited based upon the additional administrative duties that the deputy clerk, the deputy village clerk, will be performing during the intermittent absence of a village treasurer. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Further discussion? What, what's the uh, how? What's the term? What's the uh, so, so we're going to make it retroactive to March first of two thousand twenty-four, and the period will end April seventh of two thousand and twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That takes care of that. Moving on to the second and last resolution, the purchase of a hot box asphalt trailer. David, before I do the resolution, anything to add on this or to give the board a status update on the equipment? Uh, th this is just for, uh, it actually be used year round. We use it for cold patching as well as hot mix. It has a uh, diesel burner in it. It's air jacketed to the whole four ton of asphalt. Uh, it'll keep blacktop warm all day, all night. You can you can actually reheat. And Is it plugged in <clears throat> on that or no? This one doesn't have a plug in. Okay. That's an option that we can add after the fact if okay. we decide to do that. I know that. a I lot of people have to plug it. Uh, didn't go for that yeah. on this model, but oh, it's, fine. it's available. It's just the. I think it's. Do you know what the reheat time is, is on cold blacktop? Uh, the reheat time? No, I didn't look at. I didn't look. I'm just wondering. Just what do, you, what do you heat it with? What fuel? Uh, it it's runs on diesel, diesel fuel. Yeah. It's got a diesel burner in it. It's it great. Holds, and like I said, it holds four ton of asphalt. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems early in the season, late in the season, is uh, traveling with blacktop in the yeah. dump truck yeah. for yeah. 40 minutes. Cool. It's cold between sites. Doesn't understood. So, does it, Dave? Does the town have one? No, they do not. Would the town be bar borrowing? From us for uh, use, probably. Nah, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But, okay, uh, we share equipment. The, the town, the town in the Windsor purchased one last year, which was their first one that they've had, and they've had great luck. Same size, life. same model. Uh, they have the, they have a uh, oil jacketed. Ours is going to be air jacketed. What's the oil. difference? Uh, there's the the insulation in the unit is oil between the two metal components, the where ours is actually air. Where it's blowing the hot air in, uh, theirs is heating the oil. Okay. Okay. 
just different different setup. You know, that was a little. That one's more expensive. This yeah. one's a little less expensive. See, one of the problems is the plants generally close on the week of Christmas. So sometimes you have to travel to fill that box up if you're using it a lot. That's yeah. that right. that How is. How do you it. know so much about asphalt? <laughs> I did it for a week. some leaks. <laughs> like every day, and we use coal patch, which is garbage, yeah. which is what they're using now a lot. Yeah, so, so like, coal patch. This kind of a contraption. Uh, I idea. actually brought. Give a model of it. Awesome. I brought <laughs> a photo. This is actually the unit that. Okay. Oh, wow. See, that's blacktop. Now, that's this is what it looks pack. like. That's that's the unit. That, that's it's nice. sure the unit I, they have in stock. That'll be a rental. It's just like yeah. a Tonka truck. Yeah. Free. Yeah. Who remembers what Tonka trucks are? Yeah. Only the old people. No. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right on one. Yeah, no, it's three. You got to sit on. It's right, that before, versus bags of coal patch. Yeah. Or buying yeah. coal patch in bulk. No, I think economically speaking and work. obviously Possibly. making that our, our work here more efficient, this is the way to do it. The nice thing about this, our coal patch, we store it outside. Yep. So when in the you middle of the winter, it. yep. Throw the bags in. when it's five degrees outside, that's the temperature to mix. Yep. We load it on the truck, we park it inside overnight. Try to let the ambient air warm it up, and then when you go outside, yeah. But it will stay outside. I mean, there's no way to keep that inside all the time, right? No, but we put it in this. It takes when 20 minutes. Building, it's heated right? up, yeah, and you're out yeah, the door. Exactly. You load it the night before. You fire the burner up in the morning, and it's warm and ready to go. Not to take us down a rabbit hole, but I'm going to. Did you see the email from Senator Scoopus's chief of staff in regards to Route 218 and paving? When did it come through? This evening. 613 this evening. No, I did not. Okay, so Emma Fuentes, who's the chief of staff there, um, I reached out to them and asked them to make a push. They did, and I want you to stand down. I told Dave today that he has to go out on 218, which is a state road and patch, because even my Jeep, um, almost oh, bottomed bad. out on a couple of spots it's where they're supposed to do mine W today. It's 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 mine awful. W. So they reached out and apparently got a response back from DOT saying that they are going to be in Cornwall this stretch of 218 this week to do an assessment um, and maybe do some patching. They haven't given us the date on repaving, but if we could just get those patched. So stand your guys on. down yeah. because let's give them this week. If it's not done by Monday of next week, then I'm going to send you back out there because that it's just that one down there. Uh, there. Uh, it's awful. It's awful. It's dangerous. You don't know. It's Dave coming. and I talked about it this morning. Ride 9W. Yeah, 9W is um, awful yeah. too. You it's go by the hospital yeah, on 9W, it is awful. It is brutal. It is brutal. Uh, uh, car lost car. control this morning yeah. and went yeah. across the meridian. Yeah. After hitting those bumps right right by yeah. Phil's. Well, better that we get a push from the senator's office. And oh, we'll, we'll get, we'll get a response. And so don't do anything this week. I know you had plans. I told him and Dave agreed we were going to do that just we'll, we'll as be, a. We'll be cold passing our own stuff. Yeah, let's yeah, do yeah, let's do that. But that. let's stand down on 218. Let's see if the state comes in and does what they're supposed to do. We don't have a ton of our own to do. We have a few. But okay. Not. And maybe the big one, Dave, if you think that we need to do it just for a safety thing, because my Jeep hit it this morning and I, I thought I was going to. I hit it. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's move back to the purchase of the hot box asphalt trailer. So here's the resolution. I'm going to make a motion authorizing the village to purchase a new step S T E P P M F G model S P H 3.0 hot asphalt trailer from Greenway sales at the cost of fifty three thousand two hundred and ten dollars. The purchase is over the twenty thousand dollar limit required by the New York State General Municipal Law, but is not subject to bid because it will be purchased through a New York State authorized provider. May I have a second? Second. Yeah. Yes. Second. Sorry. I have uh, fifty three two three three twenty one. I'm sorry. Fifty three three twenty one zero zero. That's what I said. I said $53,321. Did I? I feel like somebody will call in. Somebody will call in. I know. All right. So let me amend that to say at a cost of $53,321.00. May I have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. That is it. So, Jim, you're suggesting we don't need to close the special meeting to go into a work no, session, no, or should we? We're, we're not. Are we taking right. any further action? No. Any we're resolutions? That's so it. Why don't That's we? Like I'll make a motion to close the special meeting. Yes. Now you got a second. Second. Sure. Well, we 
Any contract. discussion? All in favor? Dave aye. 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 I just, <laughs> no, I was just trying to clarify. No, no, you just point. closed the special meeting. No, so. oh, okay. I just right. wanted to clarify. So point I don't need to make a motion to it? open up the work right. session. No, you already opened the general general public. Public. This, this is, don't need to, this is sourced the same as the state bid. Yeah. So we're getting the best price. Yeah. I think the mayor did say. Okay. Okay. All right. So moving on to, um, since we're out of the special meeting and moved into the work session, <clears throat> now the, and this is the work that Paula and Megan are doing now, um, which was done by Jean Mahoney for so many years, but is doing the reconciliation reports for our meeting. So um, I don't have all the numbers yet because obviously I won't have them till the business meeting, but I have some of them. So February monthly water report for the village, $263,401.31. For the town, $269,704.45. So the total February monthly water report, $533,105.76. Warrant number three is obviously still not tallied and reconciled. Monthly revenue and expenditure reports by fund, the general fund revenue, $4,960,000. Actually, I'm not going to read it. I'll do that at the business meeting. Just go ahead and take a look at that. Anybody have any issues with it? And if you don't, then I'm just going to move on to the next thing. Okay. Uh, our fiscal year ends the end of this month, right? Fiscal year ends at the end of March. March. Yes. March 31st. I got a question and the new one starts you. April 1st. It's a general question. Oh. You, you might know this. End of, end, end of February. End of February. How, and this year was 29. Dis- and, right. You're right. March when 1st. does disbursement take place on um, capital sewer. Only they bill us. Yes, we've made three one, times a year. I, if I remember correctly, we've made one payment so far. Okay, yeah. just wondering. All right, know that um, on the sewer stuff because obviously we've been having a number of meetings on that stuff. We will be having one with the town. Probably, probably is not going to happen in April, but I would say by May we'll be having our first exploratory meeting with the town uptown with them on that. So, all right. So moving on to the building department, um, Senor Carmona. Um, so I had a long conversation with our council today and directed him to immediately reach out to you to deal with the summonses, the court hearings, the consultants invoices and all those things. Did those things happen? No, sir. You did not hear from him today? No, sir, I did not. Okay. Um, I'll reach back out to him. I know he understands that that is on the top of my priority list. And what am I talking about? Um, legal counsel and help on properties that are in violation, in um, repeated violation, and that we now have to take to court. So it obviously involves um, legal counsel on that. How Man, many? Do you know? Um, Several. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. This also includes those property owners with multifamily dwelling that have not complied with the fire safety inspection. Ooh. Looking a couple of dozen. Yeah. Really? Yes, sir. Everything from not mowing your lawn to broken fences to just a whole host of different things. Um, Manny, the that New York State form, and I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. The name of that form. Three. 1203, which is what? What's the title of that form? The uh, Court Enforcement Administration Report. Got it. Department. When you sent that to me, were, were all the trustees? Um, I did not say I left that. Okay. I'm going to take a look at that again first thing tomorrow morning so that they take a look at it. We need to file that with the state. I was going to say prepared. that's an annual requirement for a court report, right? Correct. What's the drop dead time that we have to get that April in? April 1st. April 1st. All right. So you're going to beat me up tomorrow and make sure that I get that to you. I got a baseball bat. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Um, Manny, anything um, off the top here that the board needs to be advised about in regards to your February report? No, sir. Okay. Um, board members, anything on here that you wish to question the building inspector about? Mm-hmm. Nothing looks mm-hmm. out of order here. So no stop work orders. That's always a good thing. But then again, this isn't really the construction season. Nobody put in to have solar panels put on their house. Um, other than that, it looks like the usual usual stuff. Any questions for the building inspector? Okay. Hearing none, we will move on to the fire department. All right. I keep getting this wrong. Is it the fire commissioner, the fire chief? Who is? Is it the captain? Is it the assistant fire chief? Who is giving this report? Who's I'm here. I'm here. I'm All here. right. <laughs> All <laughs> right. At the meeting at the end of the month, we hope to try to define the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Fire Commissions. Yes. All right. Good. 
Okay, so for this report, Rick, anything on here that um, you want to call the attention to the board for? Uh, number four, uh, through the work of many members in the fire department, we've submitted a FEMA grant to try to save the village $360,000 to replace wow. our aging uh, SCBAs. Self-contained breathing apparatus. Is that wholesale or is that um, all of them, half of them, rotation? State, state bid, it's all of them. Oh, how many? How many, you, Charlie? Yeah, uh, Captain, thirty-five. Wow. So that's thirty-five air pack, like the the uh, yeah. frames, and then yeah. seventy bottles. Seventy bottles. So yeah. every every air pack needs to have a yeah. A spirit. No spots, but everything's uh, still okay, right? I mean, they have to pass. Uh, what? It, it's no longer in compliance with NFPA. Really? This, this will bring them in, into state. They were. NFPA compliant when we purchased them 20 yeah, years yeah. ago, but standards have changed. Is that how I see is what that old they are? 20 years yeah. old? Yes. Wow. Is there value in them to some other type of agency? Only those who don't want to be compliant. Yeah. <laughs> bottles can't compliant be across the board. No. There's no bottles are done when they're done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lower standards for <laughs> scout drills or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the, the bottles get hydro tested every yep. five years, yep. um, but only they only get two tests. Okay. So 15 mm -hmm. years are done. Okay, I did not know that. Regarding and the, I'm learning a lot. Regarding number two and the candidates who have applied for membership, a lot what's their age range? Do we know the age ranges the of the two applicants? Charles. I didn't bring the applications tonight. Okay. How old are you? Thirty three. Okay. So one thirty three and thirty five. Thirty three and thirty five. Okay. We had but those those aren't the two that oh, are referenced in the report. Yeah. Oh, never mind then. Uh, Charlie's 25 and the other one's like 40. Okay. Are they village residents? Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. What else? Anything on any uh, questions for the fire commissioner or for the fire chief from the board? Okay. I'm happy with the uh, with the chart. The format to oh, me makes yeah. yeah. The, the pie the, the pie chart, chart was a little right. busy for me. Yeah. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it was simple. It wasn't that it was busy. It was the print was so small that even with my progressive glasses, I couldn't read it. So yes, this is perfect. I'm going to send a note to this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to the PD chief. Um, anything on here that jumps out you want to draw attention to for the board of trustees? Just that we need to enter into a interim municipal agreement with the county orange to participate in 2024 stop the July grant funding. Okay. We do it every year. Here. And the plan is to do it at the March 25th. Remember, there's no meeting next Monday because next Tuesday, the 19th, is the village election. Um, so our meeting will be the following Monday, March 25th. And at that meeting, the chief will have that as one of our resolutions for the board to vote on. We obviously always participate in it. I see no reason why we wouldn't participate in it again this year. So. Um, also, the chief and I had spoken um, today, and we've been speaking uh, frequently about it, but there is going to be a need to hire an, another part-time police officer. The chief is going to do his due diligence and seeing what's out there in the candidate pool, but to fill vacancies, people leaving, people potentially leaving, but just looking at the list and, and making the, and don't forget, the board has taken under advisement um, the notion of going to a fourth full-time police officer as a means to, one, save the village money um, by reducing the need for the number of part-time officers we have. Um, and number two, I think, and the chief agrees, it's just, it brings more stability to the department. So um, we'll talk about that, but that we're not going to make a decision on that March 25th. But as far as part-time police officer, chief's going to look, see what's out there, and then come back and advise the board. Chief, I get that right? Yes, sir. All right. Any questions for the chief before we move on from the police department? All right, moving on to the water department. Um, no, I'm sorry, Department of Public Works. David. Uh, obviously, uh, it's pretty generic this time of year, but uh, we are working on the port <coughs> docks. The docks, if we had, have been, uh, it's been quite a while since we did any replacement of those. So, uh, so, so how many, how many years did we get out of these? I know I was down there the other day looking at them and you told me and I forgot. Uh, 16 years, I oh, think well, Pat not, said. We had these redone, 
I, I think they were somewhere around 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. So 16 years. Yeah, about so, 16 somewhere years. That's what Tommy Lyons thought. Yeah, yeah. It was, they were done then. Now, keep in mind, um, the, the the lumber itself, just the wood, oh, was about eight grand, right? Yes. It was about eight grand. So they're stripping them down. The only things that are being salvaged and, and reused Flotation. will be well, the, the metal portions, the flotation, um, and then the some fire hose. Some of the flotation, I imagine some of Are you going to be able to reuse the fire hose, we're, which they uh, crinkle up to use as a buffer? We're actually looking at some other stuff. Uh, I, I'm not going to commit to it yet, but Got it. I found a couple of things that Got it. meant for Marine that might be a better choice. So even though these things are made out of pressure treated lumber, if you if you sit out there in the middle of the Hudson River, as long as it does in the beating sun, you know, with foot traffic on it, the the moss that's on it, the the salt, the well, the brine coming the from storms hit them up. Um, I think one of the changes that's going to happen is that the the planks, the normal planks were like two by fours the last time, and now they're going to go to a wider plank. So there won't be as many planks per they were section. Two by six, we're going two by six, two by eight, or two by ten now. Dave, with respect to the pilings, do we have to? Um, last year, good. <clears throat> last year they weren't. Last year they weren't touched either, right? No, I think last last Did year we, I do believe we put, we a couple, we put a couple in last year, but uh, this year there was. We had We're not, very minimal. You know, for some reason, I kept thinking last yeah, year right. we didn't we have did. to do it like again. I thought so last I year thought we was, did, okay, we did, but this year we didn't. Yeah. 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 So we, we, won't, we won't have to do that. Uh, yeah. There was no real yeah. ice good. events in the river, so they stayed. Yep. So we should be good there. Good. <clears throat> All right. What else, they don't Dave? get loosened like a tooth by other means besides yeah, ice? That's, that's normal. They flex. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to have any issue. I think it was long overdue, and um, and I'm glad you know Dave took us on. Getting a lot of years. Re replacing them, and it's just it's going to be a nice facelift down there, but also safer for people walking on it and all that. So it's a good good thing. What else, Dave? You held off for the beginning of the budget. Yeah. <laughs> you had mentioned you wanted to look into the possibility of some kind of longer-term replacement, yeah. but it sounds like these will last for a little while, so we can at least – Figure out what other options exist on the river. The most difficult have that part the there, pocket. those docks will last a very long time. Yeah. The most difficult part is fastening and yeah. anchoring them. Yeah. We're in a very bad spot. I shouldn't say a bad spot. It's a beautiful spot down there. <laughs> but, but just the way the the tide with the, the tide and the flow coming down the river, we're sideways. They take a beat. They get they, yeah. They're not sheltered Forces like on. a lot of the marinas are sheltered with the yeah. walls and stuff. We don't have that there. Now, one of the one of our employees did ask me, and it's a good question. I was against it just because of the aesthetics, but asked me, would it make sense going forward, maybe the next time we do this, to replace the planking with aluminum instead of using the natural wood? You know, I mean, maybe there's an initial more uh, a more expensive cost investment, but then obviously it would probably last longer. I just don't know if we want to keep the wood because everything down there really is is wood and it's part of the natural beauty of it down there. But anyway, we didn't go that route this year. You, you go aluminum, you're going to have to make them not slip as well because yep. aluminum gets yeah. really slippery yeah. and water yeah, 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 hot yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can get the ones that have the little holes, you yeah. know, punched through where they have the little grip that you can stand up. But I get what you're saying. But we're doing the we're doing the same. We're keeping it the same. Barefoot people. Ah, there's that too. All right, what else, Dave? Anything um, else? Sidewalks. I uh, met with our contractor that we use for sidewalks all the time. His bid was put back in with, through the county, so we're good to go with him. I had him uh, give me a quote for Jury Road from the Town Village line to Academy Miami Avenue, which will bring it to where the state finished doing their ADA. And then we're I got price on the curbing across from the firehouse that's busted in front of the school and in front of painters. And that'll eat up our sidewalk budget for this year. And you remember a couple of years ago, we expanded the sidewalk budget. Um, from my perspective, everything in the central business district, anything that's close to the schools where children walk, those are priorities. Josh Wojowski and I took a walk on Curie. I told Dave last year that Curie was in bad state because all the sidewalks there are essentially two feet wide. Some areas they're three feet, but they're also made out of asphalt. They're not like, you know, they're certainly not ADA compliant, but they're not concrete. 
Um, and it does go to the village town line. The town has nothing to get you to to Willow, where the school is. So when it, it's not in Josh's budget this year, but when he sees what we do this year, and we walked it and we talked about ways to make it safe for kids to travel because there's nowhere for kids to travel right now once they get to the town line without going into the road. So that is their plan for next year. I figured we would kind of set the set the bar high this year by doing that. Um, and then the other places, one was in front of painters with painters looking to open, I think sometime in July now, I think that's the plan. And again, as we continue to do what we can to make our central business district a place to, 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 to come to and, and a place to, to congregate, um, there's spots in front of painters where across from Cumberland, where we did the Cumberland sidewalks last year, painter sidewalks are fine but the curbing is missing. And that's just from years and years and years of, I'm not sure it's just the plows hitting it, but people hitting it or whatever, but there's large sections. And then there's big holes where the apron comes out, where people drive out and there's like literally a one foot deep hole. So fix those. And then in front of the school, because the school system and we have a good relationship with the school system this year, which is a good thing. The school system, Cornwall and Hudson elementary school, where we're, graced with the presence of the PTO president right now, not just a trustee, but also a PTO president. Um, Walter Moran has informed me that they're planning on repaving. We did Maple Extension last year, right, Dave, when we did the parking lot, or was it the year before? It might have been the year before. But they're planning on doing the uh, the circular drive in front, which literally looks like the lunar landscape. It looks like the surface of the moon in there. And then the roadway that goes past the pit, past the gymnasium down there. They're going to repave that. And the sidewalks are fine there. We did the we did the drop sidewalk, the ADA compliant one in the front last year for them, but also it's not their responsibility. It's ours. But the curbing there is in such bad shape too. We are going to have the curbing redone in front of the school across from the firehouse. And the apartment buildings down there on Curry Road are one of the largest yeah. uh, senior yeah. senior areas. So yeah. And that's will also probably help down there for yeah. that. Yeah, because they are they are uneven and again they're they're made out of asphalt and they're broken in a couple of places. So appreciate it. But that is going to so when people go, well, what are you doing this year on sidewalks? That is going to that length of curry is going to suck almost all the dollars out of our sidewalks this year. But it, it's definitely neat. And what we do is I try to triage them with Dave. We go around every year and I say next year we'll try to do this, next year this, but this year curry is our biggest focus. What else? Um, if you want to talk about the meeting we had the other day, 90 minutes. Not yet. Okay. Yep, that's on the agenda, and we'll weigh in on that. And I printed <clears throat> everything out. Um, I have not sent that because I did not get a chance to read it until this afternoon. I will send all that to the board, and I, I don't want to hit them and surprise them, but I'm going to I'll talk about that when we get to that spot. I'll all right. Moving on. The senator from the town of Cornwall yields back to the senator from the village of Cornwall and Hudson. <laughs> what you got, Michael? Anything that? Uh... Um, I'll just note that uh, today our Genio brothers started doing the work at the Black Rock filtration plant. And they're putting in the new 16-inch water main. They're probably another month and a half out from putting in the new um, electric actuated valve for the clear well up there. Um, you'll note that we, we got awarded $959,000 through congressional spending from Congressman Ryan. Um, and that's going to be used for a new water main up in the area of Angola Road and Cedar Lane. That's one of the areas that's been underserved by a dilapidated private water line for quite some time. How's that? Um, I just have a um, systematic question on that, Mike. So, um, the... Um, private line is um, comes off of uh, has how many inch vein? So it's a two inch private line. It comes off the ten inch ten inch vein. vein. Okay, and that's going to be replaced. That's ten inch right there, Mike. The yeah. cast iron one's yeah, ten that's, inch. That's the main, <clears throat> um, but it's on Continental. So what right. we're going to do is when they put the development in for Warren Court. Mm -hmm. There's a house on Angola Road that has a fire hydrant at the foot of their driveway. There's a future connection there that was put in the 1980s for a huge <clears throat> water main to go up that street. Okay. So that's what we'll, we'll tie in there. Okay. And Mike, while you're talking, and just as I remember this stream of consciousness, uh, Senator, 
Um, Congressman Ryan is going to be here this Saturday. I will certainly invite the board to be in attendance. I don't know if you'll be able to stand up behind the podium, but I'll certainly ask. Um, but the congressman is, what time is it? 10 o'clock to 1030 in front of town hall. The purpose of this, first and foremost, is the lead sheathings that are on some of the power lines that apparently have been coming down. And the Cornwall cleanup crew has been encountering them like in ditches and culverts when they're doing their cleaning um, all around Cornwall and the village. Um, and the congressman, I guess, has got some bill he's proposing to require this to be taken care of by, is it the phone company? Is it the electrical company? Is it the, is it? Uh, it's not electric because electric doesn't so, cheat. So what's, 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 what would be cable. have a lead? Cable. Cable. Cable did it. On, so anyway. Cable um, did the whole town at one time. Okay. So he wants that done. He's going to do that in front of town hall. It did, He would have come here. It made no sense that to drag him down here to do a second on the water project that Mike just mentioned. And since the water project is going to be in the town, it'll probably make most sense for him to make mention of it there. He does want to travel from there to actually go out to a site somewhere on Main Street where this lead sheathing is to point that out. But I invite you all there. I got to reach out from the congressman's office asking me to be there. I said, of course, Saturday, 16th, 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm certain that he's going to make mention of the, um, it's not a grant, it's a congressional. It's yeah, but what's the official title? It's like CD. Community Project Funding. Yeah, but it's a it's the congressional uh, something spending something discretionary, whatever it is. But you're right; it's all there's a lot of words in there. But anyway, he'll probably make mention of it there too. So, yeah. what else, Mike? Um, just the only other thing was, and we're going to discuss it under other business, the proposal to purchase a couple of well, replace one mini excavator and purchase another one to replace the backup. Yeah, that's down on other business. Yep, yep we'll talk it. about that. Okay, any questions for the water superintendent? We, no. um, where's the smart meter project? Oh, um, almost. Yeah, we're, we're at 36 we're, last yeah, time. Yeah, we're, we're still there. Um, I think we, we've gotten to the point where we've done all that we can do. Probably. The people are, you know, <coughs> there's 47. Out of those 4715 is Cornwall Park townhouses, and we just got all those meters in. They're all one inch meters. Um, so they're all going to wow, get replaced. Um, so that'll put us down to about 32. Out of the 32, I want to say there's nine or nine or 10 that are currently being renovated, and the homes are vacant. So we're holding off on them until they get their, their renovations complete. And the remainders, you know, they're, they're getting billed to $75. and They'll pay that for the foreseeable future. Wake up. Yeah. yeah. You're, 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 we're never going to get to 100%. It's unfortunate, but yeah, we're it is try. what it is. You know, our, our next step is to now we got to go out and find out which meters our um, reading system, the antennas, are not working, not picking up. Because the, the, the first, the, the old generation of them only had a tenth of a watt transmitter. The new generation is one watt. And we may have to replace some of that. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Michael. All right. Moving on to New Windsor um, EMS and Cornwall EMS. I, I mentioned this a couple of times prepping the battlefield, but Josh and I will soon be engaging with New Windsor in putting together a proposal for, I'm assuming the town and the village are going to be amenable to another three year term with, um, New Windsor EMS. I think we would be in light of all the news of late about, you know, having to, you know, municipalities having to jump through hoops trying to find somebody to handle their ALS and BLS services. We're in good hands right now. So when does that initial one uh, expire? Was it mid, mid next year sometime? We did it in 20. Yeah, late it's spring of next year. Spring. Yeah, okay. spring of next year. Yeah, because I think I think we signed it in the spring bill, but I think they came online July 1st. Mm -hmm. So that will probably be the target date. So I know we've got a little bit of time, but I'm always thinking that we need to start doing that. Um, so 
as I've been reading and following along in this, I mean, the average times, you know, that seem to be the, I don't want to say it's the Mendoza line, but maybe it is the Mendoza line. It's like nine minutes for responses. And if you look at the average response times on Chief Biggs report, six, six minutes and 43 seconds in New Windsor, six minutes and 18 seconds in Cornwall, five minutes and 41 seconds in the village. I mean, that's just, that's just outstanding. I mean, if you have a something an episode um that's just that's the gold standard so all right you can read that and obviously uh the deputy mayor will brief off of this will be more in depth for the next meeting but just keep in mind we are going to need to be re-upping and it's going to cost us probably a little bit more money because that's just the, the way things are okay so that's that and then all right moving on i hate to do this but i'd like to move a couple things around and i had to add a couple things at the last minute um and i hate doing that but first of all um on saturday we held voter registration in the village it's something that we do every year as a courtesy to village residents um two lovely ladies both of them village residents come in we pay them two hundred dollars for the five hours, it's, what is that? Forty bucks an hour. It's not like they're they're getting rich doing this, but um, they come in and they register people to vote or answer their questions. Um, one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't understand, maybe I've got to do a better job of messaging it, is that you can't register to vote in the November elections, national and state elections on our village voter registration day. It's only to vote in the next village election. So it's good for young folks. We've had a few of them come out. In the last five years, we've registered a total of three people. So what I would suggest and say, is it a courtesy that we continue to do? And I don't mind spending money, even if it's for something you're going, we're not getting the bang for the buck, but if it's just so that there is that opportunity, or do we look next year at reconsidering spending $400 for a five hour period. And trust me, the ladies want to work. They want to register people to vote. And they had one person come in and ask a question. They wanted to know where they could vote today <laughs> and nothing else. That's okay. So that's my anecdotes for the board to consider going into next year. Okay. We don't have to decide it tonight. I just want to put that out there as, as food for thought. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to move something else up really quickly. Um, so the, notion of a part-time crossing guard when i met with josh last week and we went to this we went to see walter moran over at facilities at the middle school and we walked curry road um josh is in the uh, process of hiring an additional crossing guard apparently cornwall's had a number of crossing guards that they don't have anymore um, the village used to have two or possibly three crossing guards. We only have one now. We have Don Hogan who handles it right across from the school at Storm King Engine 2. Um, here's what I'm going to say. I, I know somebody asked me this question, and so I went to the source to find out. Um, I asked Harvey Sotlin, who's the assistant superintendent for business at the school district, if the school system with an $87 million a year budget would finance it. And he said, Jimmy, as a follow-up to our conversation about crossing guards, please note that General Municipal Law 208-A states that only cities, towns, villages, and counties may authorize and appoint crossing guards. School districts do not have the authority to employ crossing guards. So, ergo, it's back in our court. And what I would like to pitch the board on is we do this in a, on a one-year basis. Um, we figure out when we're going to start it. We do it on a trial basis. Um, would it make some parents happy that are working their kids to school or whose kids walk unaccompanied um, from that side of town um, to COH elementary school? Of course. Is it a panacea? Is it going to solve all of our problems? Um, is it overkill? It would cost us if we paid minimum wage, which we do right now, which is $15 per hour, two hours per day, five days a week. That's 10 hours a week during the school year, $5,400 a year. Um, I, I think the fact that we had enough parents to sign that petition requesting it says something. Um, and we all know it. Jim walks his dogs there. We all walk it. We all drive past it. We know how crazy it is there in the morning and maybe, and I know we're not supposed to do this, but maybe it serves for those two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon as a traffic calming device for River Avenue. I didn't say that, but if that helps serve as that, 
What is the board's appetite for hiring an additional part-time crossing guard? I saw a near miss there the other day and brought it to Dave's attention. I'm, I'm in favor of that for that, certainly for that money. Okay. It was very, I mean, it wasn't funny at all, but I was driving down. Yeah. It was illuminating. Yeah. Illuminating. I was driving along. I was watching somebody who had pulled partway into the tr crossing <clears> walk and a mother with two kids was walking in front of the car and was looking to make sure that the driver saw them and the driver did not look to the right and pulled out and the kids yeah. jumped away and then she stopped fortunately, but yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was illuminated. So yeah, Jim, agree. I mean, I walk my dogs through there a lot, and and um, it, you have to move cautiously. Yeah. So, uh, my only yeah. argument is there's so many of them. That's there the, are. The there what about are. right here at Two Alice's? That's not dangerous. Yeah. We don't have a lot of war. We do have some. That's not fair. But most no. of them are on this side of the road, and then they cross <laughs> the firehouse. Stay they side. stay on this side okay, all the way down Hudson. Hudson Avenue. What I will say is that well, intersections no, they, where there's parking the to the corner <laughs> are much worse. Yeah. River Avenue is bad yeah. because there is a parking spot right there. There is. And also, and so when you, yeah. an SUV in that spot, you can't see around it at all. So. And when you're coming out of River Road, there's also that confusion. If someone's trying to turn left, yeah. and then there's someone coming out here and then there's kids trying to cross you can't yeah, yeah. you can't have your eye yeah. in, in five and remember different places we at took once. we took a parking space away we took a parking yeah, space away you have to take them all away you'd have to take them all, all away. away and then people yeah, are going to yeah. want it by the music store too they argue there that where avenue a runs that you know you can't you can't pull out there without getting you know t-boned because there's a car parked right there that's much if you, easier if you put out. one at river if you're coming out of Avenue A, you can walk the sidewalk, cross Idlewild. Which I'm talking about a car. I'm talking about a car oh. pulling out and not being able to see because there's a car right oh, there. Yeah. So, but yeah, I get it. That's everywhere. All right. Yeah. But are, are, are we, do we have a consensus? Because I have to look into, we're probably going to have to post for this position. I got to go through all the well, mechanics. We're going to get rid of the, uh, the voter registration day. Maybe that's the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if those two ladies want to stand out there with a stop sign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, in the snow. That's right. In the snow. All right. So I will talk to Doris, figure out what we need to do. Is the board straw poll of general consensus that we'll do this? So we're OK. I'll find out if we need to do a motion for us to post and we'll do that March 25th. OK. All right. Moving on. Um, let's go back to the top then, since I'm jumping around. Repairs to the bandstand. Um, Dave told me, advised me about this this morning. Dave, you want to um, let the board know what we're what you're looking to have done there? Well, I haven't done anything yet, but the bandstand is in need of some uh, woodworking repairs around the soffits. Soffits are bad. We replaced the roof yep. two years ago. Floor. The well, floor has been the floor, replaced right? with plastic. Yeah. The railings, but well, I shouldn't say plastic, recycled materials. Mm. And uh, it's it's time. There's some uh, rot in the... So I'm going to reach out to a couple to local guys and see if I can get some quotes on it and yeah. see, what, see what we can get in. Okay. But Very I'd good. like to try to get it done before concert season starts. That would be nice. That would be nice. Because the first concert is what, May 28th? Does that yeah. sound right? Okay. All right. Um, moving on. Okay. This is one that's going to take a little bit more time, but we need to whack through this. Um, rental policy and fees. So... <laughs> Um, first of all, off, we have like a seven or eight page application to rent things in the village. And I asked Joe today if he could take a look at Doris found one from the village of Goshen. We did fix and repair the, um, you know, and put Cornwall and Hudson in here. This is just a draft to say we could turn a seven or eight page application into a three paid ap application as long as the indemnification held and that we weren't doing anything to jeopardize you know, the village or put us into, um, um, you know, state of being, you know, of, of lawsuits, things like that. So Jim, take a look at this. She just cleaned this up. You guys should have gotten the email today with this in. If you didn't, please let me know and I'll have her send it tomorrow. I only have, I had a quick look. I only had the one change is the second sentence on the front where she's saying that she's not when reserving Dunning Farm, there's additional approval needed. It reads like the applicant has to get an approval yeah. from scenic and I, I i'm just putting down it should be just please note due to certain deed restrictions when reserving dunning farm an additional approval may be required from scenic hudson via via the village love it 
All right. Yeah. Can you just to request? Can you send an email to, yeah, with that verbiage to, yeah. in there? Okay. So I have a question about overall look of this and, and design of it. Is it recognizing that it's a legal agreement, obviously, yes. um, and the person is indemnifying the village, et cetera? And I just wonder if there's a way to make this a little more consumer friendly. Uh, Bill, that is, um, this was a project that I assigned to the village clerk and she did um, a lot of research on this and really is going to make our job easier by that. But if you think that there is a way to make this a bit more user friendly, I'm all ears. I mean, this is, it says draft because that's what it is. So anything we can do, as long as it has the things in there we need to indemnify right. the village, I, 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 I want it to be as user friendly as possible. I'll reach out to Doris. Perfect. All right, please. All right, the next page um, beyond that then are locations that can be reserved in the village of Cornwall and Hudson. All right, here's a list of them, right? So you got this thir these 13. Um, BA stands for board approval. SH stands for scenic cuts and approval. And CA stands for um, clerk approval. So you've got the Donahue Farm envelope or the open space area, the Donahue Park shelter, which is we call the commonly known as the gazebo, um, the Donahue Park Pavilion, which is obviously going to be unveiled this year. The Donahue Farm Garden Plot. Um, Doris had raised that issue with me today and said, um, if we require people to fill out permits to be on village property for these events, why don't we do that? Or should we do that? Bill, maybe this is a question for the Donahue Committee for the Garden Club and for the Youth Garden Club. What happens if somebody goes down there and tears their knee up while they're bending down to clip the forsythias? So... Just something that we can ask Joe on that. The village They're board under liability. Well, they, they do fill out a form, and I think it might actually have some kind of oh for the garden in it for the garden. Yeah, club. when they when they get applied, oh I didn't know that they do pay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah you do committee, pay a little bit. Do yeah. one? I I'll I'll find out. Yeah, so a little bit. I know they have a form, and yeah. I think there's a checkbox that yeah. says I'm not going to see. So things like the village boardroom and the, and the conference room. So this is, I call it the work session room. Doris calls it the conference room. So we'll, for purposes of this, it's the conference room. If it's a not-for-profit, if it's the fire commissioners, if it's Riverfest committee, if it's the Donahue committee, obviously we're not charging them right. to use it. But if somebody wanted to use it for something, it has not happened during my tenure here where somebody said, hey, we want to reserve that room to use it. it has not come up. Now, if it does come up, we need a policy. Um, the bandstand, um, the Village Hall parking lot, we've donated that to the St. Jude's Trikathon. That's an example. We've never car done wash. it. For mm -hmm. if the cheerleaders want to have a car wash from going. So uh, in my time here, we've never charged somebody to use it. Right. We, the board has only approved it. But if that happens where somebody wants to use it, what do we do? Firehouse truck bay. Now, this is a question that I have. And since we have, you know, we have a number of firefighters and the commissioner here. Um, my understanding is that, you know, renting that out, that space out, unless it was with a village connected entity, not for profit, um, that was generally a friends and family of the firehouse. Like, do we want to make your training room or whatever you call the room where the where you do your training at or the other room next door to that where the kitchen is off of? Do you want to make that available if Mrs. McGillicuddy comes up and says that she's going to have a roaring 20s party and she wants to bring 60 of her closest friends there? Is this something that you guys are amenable to? Personally, not particularly. Yeah, no. But um, more pragmatically, are you going to let them in and make sure they don't go on the truck floor? I'd really yeah. rather not, Chief. But <laughs> no, I see where you're going with this. I, I, I get it. But, That's why it was always someone involved. Yeah. So, but, so, but, Mr. Mayor, you, you did just say the truck floor. Um, the truck floor has gone out to not for profit groups, Lions yeah. Club, Club, the races, the cancer run that we yeah. that we, they just did, uh, and that I get. Boy yeah. Scout ceremony, Boy Scout ceremony, yeah, stuff like that. But as far as to an outside entity or or even an inside entity, let's just say it's somebody wants to have their uh, their kids first communion there. They're not associated with the fire company and they want to rent it. Are we in the business of renting out your your space? We've we've never charged our members for doing that. Right. Your yeah. members. I get that. Yeah. yeah. But so I just think we tread carefully on that because to your point. You guys aren't going to come in there and say, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be security and eyes on. 
then whose responsibility is it? Is Clean it in the bathroom. Yeah, who's yeah, exactly. No. So okay. Well, All right. You have millions of dollars worth of equipment there. And, and there's yeah, that too, the literally. liability piece of it, of course. Okay. Um now Doris phrased this as I had to get clarification on that this morning. The Donahue Park area to the south of the boat launch. That's the big field yes. where the municipal lot is on the south end, just past the just past the boat dock area, not the beach area itself. Mm -hmm. But I know that we've had um there have been private events there. The dance studio yes. did an event there last year or the year before. Had a couple of weddings. Had weddings there. The hospital, I think, had a gala there. Yeah. Um, so that's what that area is. Um, and then Village Roads. Now, Doris researched this. And I said, well, what do you mean? Like, why would we charge me? Like, if girls on, and I'm using this because I, I know the organization. If Girls on the Run, a not-for-profit, runs a race here, we don't charge them for right, roads. Right, we don't. Um, if the Cancer Society has a race here, we don't charge roads. And Doris said, well, what if an outside entity did? And I said, well, then we would take it under advisement. But for local not-for-profits, we right. never charge them. Now, if we have to bring extra police on, we have to bring extra guys in to handle clean up trash. That's a different thing. All right. So we cut to the chase. Close the roads for, uh, <coughs> the Trussell's anniversary party once. Why do I vaguely remember that? Yeah, no. Is that the cornhole yeah. tournament? Why is it vaguely? <laughs> <laughs> right. Vital Wild Avenue. Yeah, I remember that. Sometimes they had dog parties. They too. had dunk tanks and stuff. And then the other area down by but we don't uh, charge High people. Street, they have. But we don't charge people they, for block parties. They call and ask us for road closed stuff, stuff like that. We well, never, they, never charged them for right. it. Yeah, but, but there should be a permit. There should be a permit for it. Okay, I got you. I think yeah, uh, you, we've uh, had for block parties. They've gotten permits. We've done it. We've done yeah. it for Duncan, Duncan Avenue. Avenue. Duncan yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Of course, Duncan well, Avenue. You don't want riffraff, you know. Right. All right. So let me give you the method of the madness here. So, so what I so what I asked Doris to do <laughs> is take a Charlie look at some other communities and what they charge to give us a better sense. So she pulled up the Orange County Department of Parks, Recreations, and oh, Conservation, boy. their fee schedule. She pulled up the Village of that. Walden, their Recreation and Parks um, applications. She pulled up New Windsor's regarding Plum Point Park and San Giacomo's Park and the Dog Park um, and looked at those. And then Doris came up with these numbers, which she and I discussed this morning. I'm not married to them. I think good thought went into them and she's matching them up against others. So if you turn to this sheet right here with the yellow yeah, man, with the man. yellow box at the bottom of it, this one right here, Bill, this one, Dave, this one, you should have a copy of that. There it is. All right. So if you look at it, um, you know, use of the gazebo down at Donahue Memorial Park and the lawn area there. All right. We never double book those. So my thing with the pavilion was, are we going to book it in the morning and then let people have it the afternoon? We have generally speaking in the village when we did the, the gazebo is just given. If somebody was using it for two hours or four hours or six hours, they had it for that day. So the use of the gazebo and lawn area, less than 50 people, less than 10 cars, resident, $100, non-resident, 200 not for profit, 100 So I said to Doris, town of Cornwall considered a resident? And she goes, well, no. And I'm like, well, we can't charge the town Cornwall residents. Yes, I think the village should have, you know, the best rate because we're responsible. We have to we got skin in the game, but the town shouldn't be paying the right. same amount that somebody from New Windsor or Newburgh or Walden or Wallkill pays. So I think we should adjust that. I just want to throw this out. We're not we're not settled on this tonight. I want you guys to look at this. You do, you think it should be the same? Now, they have no, it's the same thing with water. They have no responsibility. It's not their police. It's yeah. not their DPW. Well, it's not let's, their garbage let's put it pickup. This way. They don't charge us extra to use the pool. That's where I was thinking. But we pay town taxes, don't we? We well, sure do. No, but town residents don't pay village tax. That's a big sticking point. Down there. Oh. Yeah. See, I think that there uh, should be a sliding. <laughs> <laughs> I think there I should. Stuck up for, I stuck up for the town. Are you running for town council? No. <laughs> no, I think. Um, no, you're right. I Maybe do think little, that yeah, we like should. Fifty, though. I don't yeah, think something, wonderful. something nominal. But I said to Dars, we need to come up with a uh, village resident, town resident. Yes. Um, yeah, town non resident yeah. because town residents are residents, yeah. Here. So, non resident and then a not for profit, that's right. You know, okay. Oh, all right. I, um, is the sticker more is your 
a car sticker more for town? Yeah. How much mm-hmm. more? Dollar? Not Dollar. much. Uh, uh, it's five for village, in, ten for town. Oh, okay. Five or ten. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll adjust it. We'll yeah. make it a little bit yeah. more. Okay. So five. we'll do. So we'll do village resident. Um, we'll do town resident. Yes. We'll do non-resident. Um, and then we'll do not-for-profit, non-resident. And Looks like we've set the not-for-profit prices the same as the resident prices for every everything. So yeah. yes, we could and save some lines on this table if we just put it as resident and non-for-profit. Bill, yes, yeah. I mean, like I said, Doris did yeoman's labor no, no, in no, putting no, this together, I'm but not you're, you're by yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying is, but yes, for readability purposes, since we're 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 going to fix that. So you just look down, you see how these things are are, are done. Obviously. Okay. Um, you know, I looked at her and I said, whoa, so the Donahue Farm envelope, if somebody wanted to reserve that, so 2000 for a resident, non-resident, $4,000. And she goes, I'm just going off of what other local communities have with a piece of property that uh, size. So, again, yeah, but that, there's mean, no number. And we're not in a position right now to be to be renting that house that's for right. anything. But I'm saying going forward, we need to be thinking I mean, about right. what well, are we going to charge wants to put up a nice tent and have a nice wedding there. You know, that's, yeah. that's a that's a fair that's price. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. expensive. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's expensive. Okay. But so one of the things, just so you know, I mean, county's expensive. The county using county facilities. Of course. Is expensive. Yeah. It ain't I mean, cheap. They charge at Cronomer, yeah. they charge by the hour. Yeah. Yeah. It's expensive. All right. And it's so, prohibited. Expense. So can nobody I, goes there. So, so can I ask the board, here's what my goal is. And I don't want to go past this. Um, May 1st, I'd like us to be in a position where we have all of this figured out. I'm not looking to vote on this on March 25th, but in April, um, I'd like to talk about this at the business meeting. So I'd ask you guys to please and lady to go back and take a look at this, come back with your thoughts on this. And then we debate this at the April work session and we solidify it so that we can vote on it at the April business meeting. All right. When it comes to the pavilion, and this is really the only thing that I think is going to have this much of a demand because we're already getting swamped with reach outs on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do believe we need to have a sliding scale of scheduling. So village residents can schedule it six months out. Town residents can schedule it four months out and non-residents can schedule it two months out. Now, if it doesn't get filled by a village or town resident and it gets to the two month window and a non-resident locks it in a village resident can't come back then and jump in and say, no, 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 we want this. You have the right to, to reserve it earliest, but then once it's booked, it's booked. All right. Is everybody in agreement with that? Is six, four, two makes sense. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Can you take a look at this, though, please, and be prepared to further Deposit discuss Deposit required? Going to have to. Yes, we'll do all those things. Okay. We'll, so we'll, we'll do all those things. That, based on that, the cost uh, looks a little too. bit low to me, especially if we're talking cost about. Cost on which one? The pavilion. On the pavilion. All right, let me. Ta- and I, we'll talk, if you want to talk yep. about it in a later yep. You know, yep. session. Yep, 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 yep. But just because, you know. You could rent it at, like a village residents could just rent it six months okay. in advance for one hundred and fifty dollars. I get that. And, and just and hold it. Like, yes, 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 yes. Like, yes, like, yes. Like, yes. What if that's Mrs. that is a good point. What if Mrs. McGillicuddy wants to have her yoga class there three days a week, ten to twelve? How much does she charge? How much do we charge her? Should these be weekend rates? Weekend rates should maybe be different yeah. than during yeah. the week rates. Yeah. Peak versus summer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Summer. Okay. October, $1,000 now. Congestion pricing. Congestion <laughs> pricing. Why don't we charge the New Yorkers coming up here? We'll charge Steve, them a million bucks. Steve's got to yeah. figure that out. Okay. He's got to figure All right. Out Can you guys do this for me, please? Just yeah. take a look at this. And be prepared to discuss it at the next meeting, please. Okay. I we just gave you a template, just something to work no, off that's of. Good. Okay. That's good. That's All right. Moving on to out. the next item of business. Um, bench policy. And I need to get back to Mrs. Hall about that. I owe her a phone call because you know, Bill Hall, who's a longtime Cornwall resident who passed away recently. His children want to do a bench for him, and the board still has a hip pocket since i don't think we ratified it but a hip pocket moratorium on 
putting benches down at the waterfront. I spoke to Dave about this the other day, and Dave suggested that there are a couple of spots that maybe we could maybe do at the, the bandstand. The bandstand, like maybe along the stone wall there, yes. put a couple of small pads down and then put a couple of benches there. And maybe I would offer that to Mrs. Hall. Okay. But I don't think we're ready. Inside unless, the park at the bandstand? Right at the bandstand. The like because people sit on the wall. Mm -hmm. Dave's yeah. thoughts were you put a couple of benches there. At least two to watch. It. Two. Watch uh, yeah. You don't want to line yeah. the entire thing with it. But kind of like the, the wall seating. Like I like the way it. You know, I know. You fill in. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I don't think people would be against it in an event. I, I thought about where the people. where the sidewalk was, where Mr. Gould's art place is, yeah. where the Christmas tree is, like where the sidewalk yeah. is. Putting a couple that along there, more, yeah. or even tucked in on the other side of the Christmas yeah. tree the to there. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's All right. Why don't maybe, sometime maybe this week, when the weather's around, nice, yeah. you and I like walk it? it. Yeah. We'll find a couple of spots. There used to be one on the corner on the Duncan Avenue side. After Dr. Seiss's office, there used to yeah. be one right there. Well, there used to be two. In fact, Mr. Gould's painting from 1986 of the bandstand oh, yeah. in my office. There are two sitting in front of in in front of the bandstand out on the sidewalk. And there was also two in front of the jewelry store at one time too. Yeah. Now you're going back. So there's also the. Uh, I, I keep meaning to like. Santoros. I keep meaning to like draw on a map, but the guide guardrail guide rail guide rail yes. Guide that, rail? Needs to be turned at Donahue into wood. Memorial Park that lines the parking lot. It's uh, currently metal. I think we're proposing to change it into. A nice they could wood. all be lined, with but them. right on the other side of that, facing out onto that lawn, you could probably put four or five. You'd you know, be amenable to that, yeah, because it doesn't block I, the line of I the told river. You about and that. But did, what, didn't we also discuss? And again, this would and it wasn't it part of our New York Ford ask. But we also talked about potentially taking that guardrail out and putting a, a nicer stone like wall, or like a stone oh, yeah, wall, wall there. But, but we know it's going to get hit. The look was kind the of look. The yeah. 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 But well, if we did, we just right on the other side of it, hit. you It'll have benches with their back to the car. Very difficult. Looking out at the. I'm not against that at all. People could park their car right there, get right out, sit down right there. It's just that actually Rich Joy's idea of the wall was a great idea. It was with plaques in it, but but. It's going to get hit, yeah. and it's very expensive to repair. Expensive. What? Look at the municipal parking lot. <laughs> look at the stone I mean, wall. Look at the wall. <laughs> it's we, really we, expensive. We sang wooden posts in front of the wall so the cars hit them instead of the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in any case, a bench location. There's also tree locations in uh, Donahue Farm. I keep meaning to Yes, we need to, make to do that. And just say, look, People ask like, about that a lot. But there are, and, and does the Donahue Committee have a list of appropriate indigenous oh, they get i have sure. it all right i have it on my all right. phone good all right ccac is on i have it oh yeah that's that's true um all right next item um the ima the ima with orange county dwi chief we're gonna have that all ready and set to go for march 25th sir correct all right notice of the easter breakfast and annual fair planned by storm king Can't engine wait. company number two chief anything to add to that any nuggets of information or things the board should know no, nope, that's just something that the park company is required to provide for the village. Why is it required to? That's what the law says. Are you funning me? No. The law, what law? I like state it. Law. <laughs> state law <laughs> says that you have to have an yeah. Easter breakfast no, at the no, fire. No, 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 no. But they have to the notify the village. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, but everybody doesn't celebrate Easter. Yeah. What do you do? Okay. Is there a special ceremony for informing the village? I think we should have an acknowledgement <laughs> of uh, notification. Yeah, it'll be across the street at uh, Pepitini's. All right. So, um, so that will is that require resolution? Probably, right? No. no? no. Just a board. Just a notice. State just a law notice. Is just that you're notified of our fundraising activities. That's it. Okay. Got it. Now it makes yeah, sense. What's the dates for the Easter? Right. Yeah, it's on Sunday. So it's year. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, coming up. All right, hold on. All right, hold on. Hold on. It is going to be April 25th. Yeah, April 28th. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. March 31st. I'm sorry. Next week. March 31st. That's not next week, please. I am out of it. I am out of it. Actually, that's vacation. All right. Okay. And the annual fair is... And is your last week of July? July 17th through the 20th. Okay. All right. Next item of business. Disclosure form online. So every year 
all village employees, including elected officials, have to fill out a, a, a disclosure form for the ethics committee, of which uh, John Ross, um, Brandy McClendon, and Bradley Lavalli are members of, then go through that to make sure that we are all in compliance with, you know, uh, not having issues of corruption or graft or all those other kind of things. Or um, So the form that we normally fill out as a paper form is pretty easy, but for, because it requires it being sent in, um, the ethics committee has requested that we go online with this, which I am all for. Fewer trees get killed. Um, Joe McKay, I spoke to him about it tonight, is just going to check. We, we may have to change our code that is specifically written, like you can't tie your horse up in front of Village Hall, and you also have to mail this in with a stamp and you know seal the seal the envelope to make sure that we can do it that way. But this year we're trying to move to an electronic version of the disclosure form. All right, I'll keep everybody in in tune with where we are with that. Joe is looking into it right now for me. We may have to tweak our code. Okay, um, cybersecurity assessment proposal. Michael, you want to handle this? Yeah, sure. Can you handle this? I can. So <clears throat> as part of the water system, public water supplies, vulnerability assessment, we have to perform a cybersecurity assessment of all of our operational hardware and software, as well as our business software, meaning our billing system. Um, this is required to be done every five years. We last did it in 2022. We did a very generic one, uh, which I completed, but they require a more uh, in-depth um, assessment done by somebody who is actually certified to do this stuff. Um, I reached out to New Windsor IT. They don't offer this service. They advised to speak to our engineers. Our engineers were like, yeah, we don't do that either. So I was able to get in touch with Fish Solutions. They're from the uh, city of Newburgh. Um, they actually do some work for the, for the fire services in Orange County. They offered two different prices. One to do a cyber assessment, <clears throat> just the water system computers and software. Uh, I think that was around $1,198. And he offered he can do the entire village as well for $2,198. Um, I think you, if you see recently, a lot of the comptroller's office has been requiring it. Um, municipalities and a lot of the, the, I don't want to say violations, but the, the commentary comes back to your cyber policies, such as changing passwords, um, multiple authentication, stuff like that. Um, so at the very least, we have to do the water system, but I would recommend doing it system-wide, village-wide, because our billing system overlaps with the village's financial software, and there is some um, private information in there with people paying their bills with credit cards and, and, and other things. So the 2198 is the water system <laughs> and the rest of the village yep. infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have, have any objections or version of that? Yeah. Does it have to be bid out? It's twenty one hundred dollars. <coughs> um, it doesn't have to be. No, you have to should get three quotes. I've attempted. Ah. Ah. <laughs> right. Oh, nobody does it. You, you should try. Well, you have to get somebody Jeez, with the correct. Uh, oh, I you see. You have to get the correct security so, yeah. credentials. Yeah. I reached out to one company. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. They do the town of Walkill. Um, there are some that will come in and do it, but they want to do it as part of a larger service. They'll do it for us if they have our entire IT contract. Oh yeah, um, well, but they yeah. don't want to do it as a one-off contract. Gotcha. And they'll, when they're done with this, they'll make recommendations as to what kind of policies we should have, and so on and so forth. Anybody have problems with it? No, no I no. think we have nope. to do it. Mike, it's going to require resolution and the. We could, yeah. Yeah, let's do that for the business meeting. Yep. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, two mini excavator purchases. All right, keep going. Um, so this started out, we have to replace our backhoe. We have a, a mini excavator now and a backhoe. Um, the backhoe is 22 years old. We sent it out to get an estimate on what it would cost to repair. It's $23,000 to repair it. Um, to purchase new, it's $112,000. Um, we only use it as a backup machine for digging as well as filling our trucks with backfill material. Um, it's really more or less a yard vehicle. Um, but in speaking with Dave here, um, earlier this year, 
we thought about buying a second mini excavator simply because of all the hyper localized storms. Uh, we've both been looking to use the same machine. Um, Happens. And exactly. So what we did was we looked at it. We can purchase a, a Kubota KX33 for $61,000, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, we can replace our existing back or existing mini excavator, which is five years old. We purchased it. We purchased it five years ago for sixty-one thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars. They're willing to give us a trade-in on it for forty-eight thousand five hundred, wow. uh, which means our depreciation cost was about fifteen thousand dollars over five years. Wow, that's great. Which means we we really only paid three thousand dollars a year for it. We're going to be replacing it. Um, for thirty-one thousand um, dollars, so the total price would be ninety-two thousand for both machines. I expect that we'll be able to get ten to twenty thousand dollars when we surplus the the backhoe to pay that down. Like what? Why? You have a picture of that, Mike? The the K at thirty-three. Uh, what size machine is that? Is that the big one? Is no, that the, the K- middle middle size one. No, ours the the KX fifty-seven that we currently have is second to largest. The KX33 is too But down. you haul that on standard trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we need a trailer too? You, we already got that. Okay. That, that, that one trailer quick. new though? Mm-hmm. One new one, trailer? Yeah. One new trailer, two machines. Yeah, well, we already, we'll already have two machine, two trailers for both machines. We got one for each machine. Right, but we're not buying it. Oh, we're buying a new trailer right. for both we machines. We already bought the new trailer out of last year's budget. Okay, so why, one so trailer, why replace the, the KX57? So you don't get stuck with it 20 years down the road and have to pay $300,000 for a new one. This way you're, you're getting a good return on your funds. So what's the difference between the newer one and the existing one? Um, just it's got new safety features. And this way you're, you're staying out of that long-term maintenance costs. Because what we're doing, when you buy them on state bid, it's a 26% discount. Yeah. So that's the only reason why. That's and how much did you say? No, it is. Really high. It is. So essentially, in your, it, the way you're looking at it is about every, every five kinda or like, six years. Kind of like our police department vehicles. Yeah. About every so five or six years, we... But we those are leased to own, though. Yeah. 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 Well, that, I mean, that's, that, that's essentially that's the same thing. That's what I'm analogizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, what yeah, you're, you're right. saying to me is that five years from now, well, I'm not going to be around on this board probably, <laughs> but five years from now, you'd be coming back saying, hey, I want to... I wanna, it, well, you just, it's just a it's a regular that's it's a regular one. replacement. I just I got it. I I don't have okay. I don't have a I don't have a problem yeah, a with it. I just want plan. to know. So you get the best return on it. Yeah, know? I understand. Um, I understand. We see what we're Dave wanted, I think, to do a few years ago with this. And you get stuck with this high maintenance costs. All right. Anybody have any objections to proceeding? As Mike is uh, advocating, I don't know. I feel like we just saved fifty thousand dollars somehow, even though we're buying stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's supposed to make you think that, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a salesman. Listen, Look over can, here. Listen, you can do it every year and actually make money if you want. No, the thing of it is, though, it, when you break it down to what it you by having that machine, you save three thousand dollars for every day you use it. Right, because you're not renting. And yeah, you're not right now. Yeah. You're paying the operator. Anyway. You're using the term to say very loose. Right? Well, <laughs> how much is it now? How much is it? How, how much is it costing? 79.9. This KX33 is 61,000. The KX57 is 79, but we're getting 48,000 back. Okay. So and that's a 25 or a 24? 24. Okay. So even if you were to save, you know, over the course of 20 years, it would still cost you thirty th- or three thousand dollars a year, yeah. but you'd have the long term maintenance cost to go along with that twenty years. A twenty one, a twenty one, a twenty two used is fifty one five. No, Dave, they do not want to buy your horse and your plow. Yeah. So our, our rental is we don't need them. Oh, rental. <laughs> how much? Thirty eight hundred a month. So Mike, we're looking. How, how much does the backhoe work? Anywhere from ten to twenty it depends. You know, if, if we it, if we put the twenty three thousand into it, we could probably get fifty. What is the kind um, of it? It's a case five eighty. Oh, okay. So we're looking to do the resolution on this at, the next at March twenty fifth, as well as declare the, the case back. Oh, surplus. Okay. So, All right, uh, and just to 
confirm what I think is implied here is that the uh, too many excavators will duplicate the work that we can get out of the backup. Oh, yeah. Well, we have a loader too, Bill. So the loader is going to take the place of that backhoe yeah, in the yard. A loader still? As, as a wise man once said, yeah. one you have none. Yeah. Yeah. You have two, you have one. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you have two backs, you have no quarterbacks. That's true. Well, that's for true for the power. Yeah. Well, well yeah. no, they got they just signed Kirk Cousins today. Oh, yeah. Giddy up Falcons. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, so last week. Um, the water superintendent, the DPW superintendent, and I had a 90-minute meeting with the USDA. This was the this was the agency that came out in the wake of the July 9th, 2023 major weather event, where we had the seven inches of water in a three-hour period and a hyper-localized storm that hung over us and really did the most damage to the village of, of any of the storms. So they told us they were preparing a report. And we were already moving forward with our FEMA asks. Now, our FEMA asks are in the range of between the water department, which is just over one million, and the highway department, which is the rest, just around $2.9 million. Now, with that, remember, um, if we get that, it is a 75%, 25% split when these things happen. So the village will be on the hook for a quarter of whatever grant money we get. We've gotten some monies, but we've obviously not gotten the big monies yet. Um, with that in mind, this other federal agency, the United States Department of Agriculture, which I was struck when they said they were Me coming too. in to be boots on the ground. We're like, what the hell do you have to do? I know, have, they got nothing nobody to do. lost a farm here. What's the problem? No animals. But um, they have a program called EWP or the Emergency Watershed Protect. Yes, you absolutely. Um, emergency Water. And I'm, Bill, I'm going to send all you guys all of this. I just got it today and I just sorted through it this afternoon. So I will get you an electronic version of this tomorrow. But they put together a report. Mike and I, um, they went through it. Mike and Dave and I went through it. There were a couple things that we had to clean up in here and a couple things that were inaccurate, not their fault, but some mistakes and things that we had to fix. Um, the biggest thing is, is that we are looking at um, about $445,000 worth of total <clears throat> project cost from them. The reason we had the meeting with them was to see what we had already put in for with FEMA and what we were asking from USDA and trying to fit the right program, the right agency to get the best chance to get the money because there is no double dipping. If FEMA funds something, USDA drops out. If USDA funds something, FEMA drops out. You can't take a partial from here and a partial from here. Again, with the USDA, um, we're talking about a 75-25 split. So let's just say that when they trim down some of the ones that went to FEMA, we're looking at probably somewhere just under $300,000. The village would be on the hook for 25% of that. But the, the type of work that they do um is substantial as far as let's just take the boulevard for example everybody's familiar with the four houses five houses on the boulevard as you're going down the boulevard headed toward the hudson island nature museum so you come off of payson road and those homes there that is a declared flood zone by fema standards and you walk around out there and there's actually they, they pulled plant life out and said this is this plant only grows in a marsh and that's somebody's backyard there um the two things that they can do is they can provide recovery monies to people that had damages, but you have to prove that there have been multiple flooding. So if you had one huge flood event on July 9th, that does not count. There's been multiple floodings. And the other option is the buyout. The buyout is where they come in. There has to be a sponsor, which means it would be the village. They come in and they provide, is it three quarters? Was yeah, I think it was three quarters. 75, cost. 25. The village would have to pick up that other 25 and they would buy that property out, give the homeowner that so they can go move somewhere else. And then obviously the there would be a raising of the prop of the building, and you would just turn that area into, you know, a floodplain. Um, yeah. Nothing, none of the homes that were hit the worst. And on July 9th, the ones that were hit the worst were at the bottom of Mountain Road yeah. and along Boulevard. And the two at the end of Payson, those are the ones that got hit the worst. None of those homes qualified for the buyout. Now, as far as recovery operation, 
that's a separate thing. I'm trying to fight for a couple of them where maybe the way that they had assumed that the damages were not accurate and trying to explain to them, no, this was somebody's first floor here. But it's also interesting because we got maps from them of the area at the bottom of Mountain Road and what is considered a floodplain. Uh, they do it by percentages. You know, this one is a 50% zone. This is a 1% zone. Um, so very interesting education from them. So the bottom line is they are working with us. One of the biggest things I think that they're going to be able to provide for us is the stream bed on the back side of the boulevard home. So when water comes off the mountain, it comes down into two, two sluices, if you will. Then it joins together and ends up down at the bottom by Hudson River. They will come in there and they agree that needs to be dredged out and they will do that work. They're the experts on that and knowing how to return it to a state that it should be in because as stuff washes off the mountain and then it comes down and it jams up our pipes, jams up our stormwater drains that our guys have to keep clear, but it starts piling up on the edges. It continues to fill up yeah. that that culvert there. Mm -hmm. And then the culvert just starts to do this and it flattens out. And then where does that water go on the people's properties? So Dave, Mike, um, I know Mike, there was a water project, Dave, there was a number of projects around those homes. What, what, what am I, what did I leave out in that general overview? Well, we're looking, we're looking at the, uh, the boulevard, which I don't know if they, if they actually come in and do the dredging or they're just going to provide the funding for us to right. secure the somebody to do it, to do it. They also looked at one of the box culverts on the mountain. Yeah, they want. They agreed to take that. We had FEMA looking at that too. So I we just got to. I haven't got the exact numbers back. I'm still waiting for Jason. We're moving forward with it, but we might withdraw that depending on what FEMA. And there's another spot up around in the uh, 190s on Mountain Road that they are willing to look at because they they won't do anything with roads or anything like that uh, putting roads back or road damage but the damage to infrastructure and like the adjoining property but as you, so it'll help out but as you can see from the report and i will get one of these for each of the trustees this is a public report so the public is entitled to see it there's nothing secret or you know top secret here but they we took them to all the different locations and they took copious photographs they took video and then they went back and worked on this and you know looked at what would meet their program's constraints so that's what we're just trying to do we're trying to figure out where we get the best bang for the buck and making sure we cover as much as possible it's not going to be a panacea and the village is going to be on the hook for some of these repairs um, and remediation but at least it's a it's a help and the people that we were dealing with are new york state folks they're the ones that put it together and then it goes to to USDA, but USDA is generally going to follow along the lines of what their recommendations still, are. Your state might pick yeah. up half <laughs> of the 25% on FEMA. So what I'd love to see is the, oh, that so, is that comes done yet, mm. but it's still possible. So, so, so Dave, that's a that's a good point real quick. Um, so what Dave just mentioned is the 75-25 split. Um, the New York State Legislature is looking at possibly trying to provide relief to municipalities for that 25%, whether or not that happens or not, I don't know, but they are um, seeking to see if they can defray some of those costs by helping us with that. Because but that would only be on the FEMA fund, <coughs> the USDA. Yeah. Only on FEMA. During Irene, they picked up the 12 and a half percent. It, 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 it did helped. help. It, yeah, yeah it, helped, it helped a lot with us because some of the uh, in-kind services count. Yeah. So Senator so, Scoopis's office is working on that and will keep us in the loop. We submitted all of our project asks for FEMA to them so they know what the amounts are and what we're looking to have done. And then they're going to try to seek if we do get approved for them to 25%. Okay. I'll get this out to the uh, trustee. Go ahead. Mike. On the water. Yep. So there's not going to be any water projects funded through them because they, they feel FEMA's better suited. The, the one interesting thing is the, the stream bank heading up to our Black Rock filtration plant. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to qualify because, in their opinion, that a lot of the damage was sustained from a previous storm, which goes back to Irene. Irene, yeah. So right about what they, that. they're saying is if we had fixed it then and if we fix it now, future storms, it'll be covered. So that's just a, another way of, you know, hate to use the term but kick the can if we don't kick the can down the road we fix it now we'll we'll be making ourselves eligible for funding down the road if it happens again yeah 
All right. So I'll keep the board in the loop on that. And I will uh, get that packet out to you guys tomorrow. It's interesting. So, I mean, you know, it's a lot of pages, but it's, it's, it's a good read. You know the locations and you'll see what their assessments were. So I'll send that out to you guys tomorrow. Um, next item is vet rep. And um, I already let the board know this, but I'm, I'm disappointed, but I understand the reasoning why. But vet rep um, has decided to withdraw their application for the Savage Wonder Festival that was going to be held in October down at the Donahue Farm property. Um, and they are moving that operation to Beacon. Um, Beacon apparently made them an offer of a location there that just um, suited their needs perfectly. Um, and they're going to move essentially their their playhouse, which right now they're operating out of a out of an old home across the street from the old DeChicos. And they had purchased the uh, Shadane property, which is around the corner behind the Chico's. Um, but now that's kind of up in the air. The lemon building is where they're going to put their space of operations. They're going to turn that into the Imaginarium and that's essentially where they're going to have their headquarters. So they will be remaining in Cornwall. Um, but they will do all of their productions, their big productions out in Beacon at a playhouse that they're building out and they will do Savage Wonder out there. So this this automatically begs the question, well, what happens to the two asks that they put in for the New York Ford funding? Um, Christopher Paul Meyer, who is the CEO or COO, for lack of a better um, term, of vet rep, came to see me last week to fill me in on it. Um, they have been in contact with the Department of State. The Department of State is the part of the government up in Albany that handles the, the disbursement of, uh, of New York Ford funding. And they know that they are standing down on the Shadane property. So that project was one of our 10 will now be removed, which leaves us with nine. So same pot of money, $4.5 million, but nine. And they are still in on the Imaginarium, the old lemon building across from Prima Pizza um, for turning that into a, a cool theater and a bar and a, you know, rooftop restaurant, well, not restaurant, but rooftop bar and, artwork and you know art displays and all that kind of stuff so i'm disappointed to see them go but they got to do what's in the best interest for them but that takes one thing off of our plate as we were working through scenic Hudson was 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 being a good um was being a good partner in the sense of trying to figure out a way to get to yes for that operation but it will not be something the board needs to entertain any longer all right. There should be a press release, which I share with the board, the draft one, but should be either went out today or maybe yesterday or, or tomorrow. So just keep your eyes open for that. OK, moving on. But they will still be doing things in Cornwall. So don't forget that. And we'll wait to see what happens at the Imaginary building. Yeah. Or not? Yeah. But, Bill, yeah. it's like um, some of it's in his name and some of it's owned by vet rep. So yeah. I think they're trying to work out what makes the most sense right now that. Are they going to sell something? Are they going to keep it in vet rep? So they're working on all that stuff. But yes, they did buy that property. They're leasing the property they're in right now. Okay, moving on to summer playground update. So tomorrow morning, are you still coming with us? Tomorrow morning at 1130, myself, uh, the director of facilities for the Cornwall Central School District, um, 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 Walter Moran, um, the supervisor for the town, uh, Laura Kirby and Phyllis Murphy from, this is going to be a whole troop of, troop of folks in the middle of the school day. We were trying to do this like before school, after school, and Walter's like, no, nah, no worries, we'll get you through there. So we're going to go take a look at um, COH Elementary School to figure out how to do a conjoined camp there. Now, the people that ask, well, why if the school system is making it available to go back to separate camps this year? Because they're going to allow Lee Road to be operated and they're going to allow COH Elementary School to be operated because we know that next year they have to be conjoined again because phase two of the of the build out and construction will be conducted next summer and COH Elementary School is going to have all new windows put in. So that will be offline. Extended school year, special needs kids or, or kids that need the extra school time. Um, last year was at COH Elementary School. This year, it's going back to Willow, where it typically operates out of, and that's where it will remain. 
The reason why it made more sense to move it here to do it conjoined with the town is because there will still be work done at Lee Road. They're still going to be doing ceilings and work in the parking lot, the playground area and all of that. So this year, other than them doing that paving, which will happen probably before the end of the school year, no work will be done at Cornwall and Hudson Elementary School. And from my perspective and from our perspective, I think it's nice to bring the conjoined back here. It was conjoined last year in the town. It'll be conjoined this year here in the village. And then we'll go back to the town next year. And then beyond that, we'll either split them and go back to our own schools and our own, our own, you know, venues, or we'll make a determination that makes more sense. I'll tell you this, when I heard that we were going to have to run our own camp with no infrastructure, competing for the same young kids to be camp counselors, understanding it's going to cost us more money because minimum wage has now gone up. We're not paying $13 an hour. We're paying 15 bucks an hour, which means all the salaries are going to be bumped up understandably. And we didn't have a director. We didn't have an assistant director. Um, we would have to start from scratch with the town running it. And they would still run it. If we do it at COH elementary school, the village cuts them a check. The board budgeted $15,000. That's what we paid last year. It will be more than that this year. Um, and one of the things I want the board to consider, if we had split the camps, I'm convinced that we needed to go to five hours a day instead of the four hours a day that we've historically done. We do nine to one. The town always does nine to two. And I would have wanted us to go to nine to two because I just think it's it's tough for working parents. So we'll know tomorrow. Lori Beth has some reservations about trying to do it with all the kids at that location. We're going to take a look tomorrow and see how this can be worked out. We do have the benefit of the playground that's our own, a field that's our own, the apron in front that's our own, the auditorium that's available, the pit, uh, the pit gymnasium that's available. The only downside is that the cafeteria at Lee Road is a box and it is cavernous and huge. And the one here at COH Elementary School for any of us that have been there is a long linear and it will be tight. It is air conditioned though. And the one in town is not. So that's a benefit. So we get the firehouse bay right across the street. Yeah. Well, Chief said he would be more than willing to, to handle a group of kids. 13 bucks an hour. You're good with that. <laughs> Just hand him the keys to the truck. So oh, oh, oh. All right. So any what, questions? What is the population difference? Like how many? So uh, we would we do the, do, we would do the same collect? thing we did last year. We would, we would do 125 and 125. Um, the nice thing is again, that by doing this, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do registration. It would be yeah. run out of the town. They now are doing it online this year. So when they open up registration, you'll be able to do that online instead of having to physically go in. And obviously we'll make it available for village residents up to 125, town residents up to 125. And then if there's any space there, then people outside of the village in the town. And our, our usual number is like 135, I remember the year before yeah, last. Yeah, but, but Bill, you probably average on an average. I only yeah, know this because Jen ran it. Is, not even that, 90, Dave, yeah, because, 90, you 90, 90s, 90, because you got 90s because you got people yeah. on vacation. The and they first take day, it the year. first couple of days. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. But, you, but you're average. And I think Jenna told me she was average of between 95 and 100 per day. That's probably that. Yeah. But you're registered for 125. You got to be prepared for 125. You got to have enough counselors there. You got to have or all the things. If we're going. Yeah. So yeah. Now, yeah, um, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, Save them. Yes. <laughs> and one of the things, too, is if we were doing it on our own again this year, we would have had to raise the fees. Mm -hmm. We were charging half of what the town was, ch was charging. And the argument can be is our camp is just as robust and just as involved and has just as many things. So, but hopefully we don't have to get to that, but we'll see tomorrow. Maybe you'll see something tomorrow. My time. All right. All right. Okay. Um, that's the summer playground update. Um, boardroom carpet install starts tomorrow. So one of the things that, uh, that Dave's, I'm sorry, Wednesday, tomorrow is Tuesday. You're right. Um, our guys ripped out to save money. Our guys ripped out all the carpet, which has been there for a hell of a long time. And I think the village got its money's worth out of it. Um, we're going to put a pad down this time. Um, and then carpet, we found something like this, but it's darker, but it's obviously durable and stains will blend into it better than what we have back there now, but it was I ready for an update. For you. Yeah. <laughs> my my mother-in-law christened the carpet last time when she came in for something and a full cup of Starbucks went on the floor. Like, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> so anyway, um, but it'll be ready for election day on Tuesday. It'll be ready for the following Monday for our, um, for our business meeting. Okay. Um, good news was right after we did the um, the disbursement of the municipal tourism grant award, 
Um, we got notified that an additional 4,000, as we expected, but still was nice to see it, $4,999. Obviously, I'm putting in for that. I will keep you advised on it. And then in at respect to Bill, we will take a look at at looking at something different because I know there are also other there are also other um, groups that said, "Hey, we're, we're we're helping out with tourism too. What about us next year?" So it'll be we'll tackle yeah, that then. Up. Yeah. So okay, so that's that. I'll keep everybody in loop on that. Moving on to um, dates, um, Mr. Chair, March twelfth, six p.m. Fire Commission meeting is here. That's tomorrow night. All right outstanding all right and you're going to talk to doors but making sure the doors get popped open so you guys can get in and out okay all right perfect uh march 13th um here which is wednesday 7 p.m riverfest meeting and then march 19th which is next tuesday so a week from tomorrow 6 a.m to 9 p.m the hotly contested village election yeah. will take place. So what's the over under on turnout? Anybody want to give me the over under on turnout? What are you expecting? 150? No, I think we'll be I think we'll have more than that. Anybody else? Just saying. Nobody's running. They're right here in the room. <laughs> mean. Yeah. I'm gonna set the over under yeah. at I'm gonna set it at yeah. four. Tell me about it. I'm going to 400. Wow. So you guys are going under. Okay. All right. You're, you're going to take the under? All right. In a trustee uncontested election. Yeah. You're taking the under. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Possibly uh, well under. I mean, been possibly ones, well under. There have been ones where it was. Too, there have yeah, been. I mean, yeah. It's going to be the same when we come and ask the question. Voter registration. All right. That person's coming. I can finally vote. All right. Just, you had, you just had planning board update on that. Oh, I sure did. I'm sorry on that. So I met with Maureen Spaulding, um, who has been on the planning board for a number of years. She was appointed by Mayor Coyne, and then she was appointed. Um, chair of the planning board and she's done that gosh i think now going on six years or so um maureen is stepping down um, for no other reason that she just wants to do some different things and she still volunteers with the cornwall youth soccer cornwall united soccer she may want to get in, involved in some stuff in the town she has definitely put in her service here um so i've made some reach outs which i've informed the board of um, of some people that may or may not be interested. And we're looking at some options right now um, for an internal promotion, potentially from the board itself to replace the chair. But then we have a, a spot to fill as well. So if any trustee has an additional name that they would like me to consider, because remember, this is done by board majority vote. It's an appointment. Um, please, please send it to me or just, just reach out to me. Um, we're not doing anything in the next couple of weeks. Um, Maureen has committed to staying on um, until we have a replacement in place. So we're not, we're not, we're not, we don't have a shorthanded board. Okay, that's that. Thanks for thanks for reminding me of that, Bill. I'll make another reminder. March sixteenth, which is Saturday, ten o'clock at Town Hall. If you're interested to hear the congressman speak about the lead pipe, the lead sheathings, and um, make mention of the uh, the monies. All right, with that, that are there. I'll go around the board. Lori <coughs> Beth. I'm good. Nothing. I'm good. Bill uh, Donahue committee meets on March 26th. Your meeting got our, moved. Yeah, yeah. Cause there was a, there was a, there was a little bit of a quagmire here of yep. meetings. Okay. Thank you guys for being flexible on that. Thank you, Jim. Nothing. nothing. I got nothing. Any of the uh, superintendents and the alibis, nothing. After the meeting, Jim. Who do you need to see? Okay. Um, all right. So I'll make a motion to close the special meeting slash work session. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. You'll give Doris those. Yeah. Okay. Those meeting minutes. All right. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Dave, you'll kill that. Yeah, please. All right.